Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah I'm your host Mohsin Shah and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'a Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Sheikhna, this uh, new discussion we've got today on today's episode is something that really appeals to a lot of people and I know to yourself because you do a lot of travelling and I do a little bit of a fair deal of travelling myself so we know that when it comes to prayer, is there's a different prayer for travelers. So my first question is, what actually um, applies that makes you a traveler? What's the, what's the attribute of the quality that makes you a traveler? A'udhu billah as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa alihi muhammad the traveler or the musafir and the salat of the musafir is defi defined as the one who intends to stay in one location less than 10 days. So let's say I want to go to uh, Ziyara to Medina Munawwara and I want just to stay there for one week and come back or to Karbala, or to Najaf, or Mashhad, or Qum, and it just stay five days. That is the definition of the Salah of Musafir, in which he must um, start praying Qasr, to shorten his Salah. And that applies only, because some people ask me about the Maghrib, can we do Qasr for the Maghrib? <laughs> um, the Qasr and shortening the Salah is only applied to Dhuhr, Asr and Isha prayers which are four, the even prayers, not the old ones. So we would pray Salat al-Dhuhr and Asr and Isha instead of four, two, exactly like the Salat al-Subh. But with the intention of Dhuhr, Qasr and Asr, Qasr and Isha, Qasr. That's how we pray it and that's how uh, the, the Salat al-Musafir is known to be. And of course, it is man mandatory for the, the traveling person who, who travels to make sure that um, to meet the condition of uh, the Qasr, to know the criteria, to know what, is, what will make him to pray Qasr. That's yes. important. So to know these conditions, I think that will make it easier for for uh, the traveling person to be able to make the decision that do I pray Qasr or in full? Sheikh, is there any area or place where a traveler doesn't have to pray Qasr Salah? I mean, one is obviously if you're staying longer than 10 days, then you won't, you do not qualify to pray Qasr Salah. Lakin, is there any places where if a traveler visits this place, he has to perform his full salah or he has the option to perform full salah? The Sayyid mentions four places, four holy sites in which if you were to go there and stay less than 10 days as a traveler, the exception there you can choose to, to pray uh, in full. Although you're a traveler, you're, you're uh, um, in a state of uh, um, musafir, but you are allowed to pray full in those locations. But of course, you're not allowed to fast. You break your fast, but you pray full. Because the exception is for, okay. the, for the salah only, not for the, for the fasting. Yes. So you're a traveler. You have the choice. You're permitted. You're allowed. You make the choice to pray full or qasr. Um, those places are uh, the city of Mecca, al mukarrama the Medina, al munawwara and Kufa, and the shrine of Imam Hussein Salamullah Alayhi in Karbala. So these mm -hmm. four holy sites, you are allowed to choose to pray Asr, to shorten your Salah, or you can 
uh, choose to pray full and complete Salah. When you say um, these four places, are we mean, is it restricted to the actual mo building, the mosque or the haram? Or does it include like, the surrounding areas as well? If I'm in the hotel which is opposite the shrine of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, um, can I pray full salah in that hotel or is it only in the shrine? The saying mentions clearly that the grand mosques of the holy cities of Mecca, so inside the mosque of Mecca, and you know how big the mosque uh, of, of uh, Masjid al Haram is, Mashallah. and the Mac Medina as well, mashallah, is big. And you have Kufa, Masjid Kufa, Kufa, the inside it's of the Kufa place. itself, and uh, the shrine of Imam Hussein, which you will know how, how big is, is that the shrine is, as well. So, yes, inside the shrine, anywhere you choose, you can start praying in full, although you came there for just two, three days for Ziyarah and you want to go back. Ascent, Ascent, Shaykhna. Shaykhna, what is the criteria of the traveling salah? As in, what are the. Um, Restrictions and what do uh, what qualifies me to pray Qasr Salah? Um, before the one decides to be uh, as a Musafir and to choose to pray Qasr, he must make sure that he meets these eight criteria in which um, allows him to uh, become a traveler and to uh, perform the Salah. Uh, in Qasr and to shorten the Salah. I start with the first one. The first one is that the designated distance to be traveled. So the first thing you have to make sure um, that before you choose to, st to start praying Qasr is that the distance both ways outbound and inbound as a return journey should be at least 44 kilometers. That is the least amount in which will allow you to uh, be able to perform the Salah. Otherwise, if you go, let's say, 10 kilometers, you go out of the city, and then 10 kilometers to come back, so in total it's only 20, 20 kilometers, the return journey, then you cannot pray Qasr. Okay. So the, the return journey should be 44 kilometers. So let's say 22 to go out and 22 to come back, then you're allowed to pray uh, Qasr and to break your fast as well. We have to make sure that we calculate from the outskirts of the city that we live, okay. or the village we live, in which when we go out, we don't see the walls or the houses of the last houses and, and the walls of that city. So, um, with today's Constructions, for example, we have the boundary of some of the major cities is the um, the, sacral ro the the circle of the uh, the city, the highway, for example. Indeed. When you leave that highway, then you left the city itself. For London here, we have the M25. M25, yeah. for example, yeah. yes. So if you leave M25, you calculate from there uh, your journey back, uh, you know, whatever is the distance, and if it's more than 44 kilometers. Uh, both ways, then you start to break your fast and pray Qasr. Otherwise, you have to keep praying in full and you have to keep your, your Salah as well and your fasting as well. Ahsan Shaykh. Shaykhna, what does one do whether he doubts how far he has traveled? He's not sure whether he's broken uh, the limit which requires the person to pray Qasr or not. So in that situation, I don't know if my namaz uh, my salah is qasr or not, what should I do? If that individual traveled less than 44 kilometers of the journey and um, both ways of course and um, or there's a doubt that did he pass this limit and if he's not sure if he has to perform the salah in full or qasr, in this case he must um, uh, not shorten his salah. In other words, he must pray in full until he becomes certain that he has met the conditions of uh, Qasr salah, then you can pray Qasr. Otherwise, if there are doubts, you have to wait, you have to ask, research, and check. If there are no 
uh, answers to the distance, how much you've made of the journey, then you pray in full. And then you switch to the shortening of the Salah and the Qasr when you're certain that, yes, now I have met the condition of the distance, then you can start uh, the Salah uh, in Qasr as well. Sheikh, what happens if there's two routes to a destination? One route is more than 44 kilometers there and back, and the other one is shorter. Which uh, rule applies here? If there are two routes towards a destination in which they differ in terms of the distance, in this case, if you choose to go uh, the far distance route, which is 44 kilometers or exceeding that uh, distance, in this case, when you arrive there, you pray Qasr uh, or you shorten your Salah. However, if you choose the closer way in which is less than 44 kilometers both ways, in this case, you have to pray in full because you haven't passed that limited you met the and, and, and the minimum distance mm -hmm. in which uh, makes you as a traveler, as a musafir. So let's say you just traveled 35 kilometers both ways. You cannot pray there as Qasr. But you chose another way, another route in which it will make it 50 kilometers, for example, both ways. In this case, you can pray Qasr. That's fine. MashaAllah. Sheikh, now, you discussed with us the first criteria, which was um, you have to travel a minimum of 44 kilometers there and back. And it's from the outskirts of your city, uh, whether it is a road or the city wall where you cannot no longer see the final house. What is the next criteria? The second criteria that is the intention to travel um, the designated distance. In other words, you have to make the intention from the first place that I'm going to travel 44 kilometers or more so you can attain um, the condition of being as a musafir and traveler so you can pray Qasr. Otherwise, if you don't make the intention, you might go just, just for 10 kilometers and come back. So you have to make sure that you plan and make the intention that I'm going to travel uh, 44 kilometers both ways or more. And then you can uh, break your fast on your way or pray Qasr and so forth. That's important uh, condition that must be met from the first place. You plan it well, you make the intention, and uh, that's it. You start uh, breaking your fast and, and, and shortening the salah. When does one actually break his fast or start shortening his salah? I mean, I've planned to go to from London to Birmingham, which is like 120 miles away. Um, so do I, can I start to pray my uh, Qasr Salah as soon as I leave for this journey before I've even um, you know, traveled uh, 22 miles in one direction? Or must I first fulfill the criteria before I pray my Qasr Salah? The intention is there, I'm going towards uh, for a long drive. If you have the intention to travel, as I mentioned, 44 kilometers or more, both ways, and when you have that intention and you begin to travel, when you leave that city or village and you start to um, not see the, uh, the walls and, uh, and the houses of that city, after a few kilometers, maybe seven, eight kilometers, it depends on how big the city is. In this case, when these signs are disappeared, the walls and the houses of that city, you reach a place known to be as Had Tarakhus, a place where now you are given the permission oh. to break your fast and pray Qasr both. Yes. You don't have to go 22 kilometers all the way or 44 kilometers straight, and then you break your fast there. No, no, you just pass the city. After a few kilometers, the houses, the walls are disappeared. Then you reach that point in which you are given the permission to break your fast and pray Qasr as well. So you have to make sure that um, 
everything is disappeared when you uh, uh, travel from that city. Nothing can be seen. Uh, you travel some few kilometers and then you stop somewhere. You can break your fast there and you pray Qasr. That's fine. So, Sheikhna, correct me if I'm wrong. I've made the niyyah to go on a, on a long journey, more than 44 kilometers. As soon as I leave my city, uh, the city boundary, and as soon as there is no more residencies or shops or any of the sort, whether it is um, 22 kilometers or not, even if it's less, I am allowed to pray Qasr Salah there because of my niya was to go a uh, very, very far distance. Exactly. I mean, when you reach that point that you no longer see the walls or the houses of that uh, city, your own city that you left, or the city you were, you were resided in for, for 10 days or more. And of course, um, you left that city now. You no longer hear the adhan of that city. Just a few, as I mentioned, kilometers. When you pass that level and the stage of uh, the route, then you can park somewhere and start eating. You, in other words, to break your fast. And of course, to start praying Asr and shorten your prayers. You don't have to go, as I've, as I've said uh, in the last question, that you have to go 22 kilometers all the way mm -hmm. or to travel 44 kilometers and then you break your fast in the destination. No, you can, on your way, just after, let's say, 10, 15 minutes of driving from the boundary of your city, you stop somewhere, you break your fast and you pray Qasr as well. And that's only with the near that you are traveling more than 44 kilometers uh, there and return. Definitely, because that was one of the main conditions I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yes. I understand. Shayna, what's the next condition? The next one is the one does not break his intention from traveling. So when you make the intention that I'm going to travel 44 kilometers or more, and you plan that journey and you make the intention, if in the middle of the way you decided not to travel and to break this intention, then you have to pray full because you no longer are going to um, go that distance of 44 kilometers both ways. So you cannot pray Qasr. Now you only want to do 10 kilometers both ways, for example, and come back. In this case, you have to uh, revert back to the full prayers and you have to keep uh, uh, the fasting as well so you can't break it because you're not a musafir anymore. Ahsan, thank you very much Sheikhna. Thank you for this discussion and thank you to all of you for joining us. Inshallah, we'll be continuing our discussion on Qasr Salah inshallah, on the next episode. Until then, don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. <laughs>